Okay, I'm trying again. Uh, so it, I'm wondering if you guys can hear me, if, uh, if this is coming through. Isn't it fun when you wrestle with technology? So um, I'm I'm giving it a shot. I think I think we might have to abandon this for today. Um, anyway, if you're hearing this, I just want to wish you a wonderful weekend. And um, I look forward to seeing you again here. So much love to you guys. Um, I don't know if this is streaming or not. So uh, the, you know what, I'll give it a shot anyway. It looks like maybe it's working a little better now. Uh, although I don't, if you were in the chat, you might have to log out and come back. Uh, anyway, today was to talk about human being versus human doing. Hi, Roslyn. Okay, so is this working now? Is the sound okay? Um, I guess we get to roll with things as they arise, right? So um, this notion of needing to do things to prove things in the world. Oh, good. Thank you, Roslyn. Much appreciated. Um, th the idea that our value in life is determined by what we produce in the world. Thank you, Lisa. So glad to have that feedback. Appreciated. Um, is, is something that I think at its root, the, the assumptions that are underlying that notion of we are only as good as what we do in the world is a um, sort of an upside down perspective, but it is, it is reinforced at every turn in our lives. You know, like how even, even if we are cultivating a new paradigm, uh, we still have this compulsion to have to do things in a certain way, to produce things in the world, um, to, to make a difference and understand that I'm one of those people that feels like I, I wanna be contributing in the world. Um, however, when we do what we do out of, a sense of trying to prove ourselves or justify our worth, even though that may not be the conscious motivation, that's kind of twisted. And the truth is we're here, you know, we're here, we're alive, and we're worthy of being here just by virtue of our existence. Um, you know, if we look at nature, nature isn't about trying to justify itself. It's here as an expression of life. You know, um, other, other living beings on this planet, they're not here trying to justify themselves. They just are. And so what if, what would be different if we allowed ourselves to belong, to be worthy just by virtue of our beingness, that we didn't have to prove anything to anybody what would it be like in terms of our choices? What kinds of different choices might we make about our lives if we didn't have to, um, if we didn't have to perform to justify our existence? What might be different? You know, what choices might we choose? Like if we didn't have to prove anything to anyone, if we could just be. What might you do differently? What things would you choose to do that, that make your heart sing, that light you up? What, what would it look like to be living your life from a place of 
just possibility, you know, to be pursuing the things that matter to you. Um, I, I think that this is the foundation of the paradigm shift that we get to be creating as we're creating this emergent world, that, um, that we get to value what we value. This is, this is a really big deal to give ourselves permission to be in alignment with what we care about. So this conversation is coming about as a result of a conversation with a client relating to um, using the core connection cards that I developed. If you're interested in seeing them or, or you know checking them out, what they are, you can go to yourcoreconnection.com. And I think that there's a header that says cards or something like that. But um, the core connection cards are to support you in identifying your key values, your core values. And the interesting thing is that most of us don't take time to recognize what our core values are. And as a result, our lives are often profoundly misaligned with what those values are, which obviously makes sense. It's kind of a recipe for misery, right? If, if our lives don't reflect our core values, then how can we be in alignment, right? So what was awesome was that in this process, you go through the deck, there's 125 words, and you go through the deck and you pick out the ones that resonate with you. And then we go more deeply to say, okay, so what's foundational? What's foundational to who you are, to your beingness? So as an example, uh, one of my core values like that is essential to my being is creativity. If I didn't have the opportunity to be creative, and creativity shows itself in a multitude of ways, um, but if I didn't have the opportunity to be creative, I would die. And so to be in a job where I, thank you so much, Dido. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome. Great to have you here. And thanks guys for persisting with me through. Hello, Elaine. So good to have you here with us this morning. Um, so good to have you guys persist through the technical challenges. I so appreciate it. Lisa says, OMG, that would change so much. Through my life, I recall trying to prove myself over and over again. Now I realize it was off-putting to others. I seem desperate, which I get now. That's interesting, Lisa. You know, like when, when we're trying so desperately to prove ourselves to others, what we're really trying to do is to prove our worthiness to ourselves ultimately, right? And, and what we're doing is we're gauging our value based on other people's ideas or perceptions or opinions, right? Judgments, other people's judgments. So we're trying to, you know, maybe we're accumulating all kinds of credentials. Maybe we're, um, we're doing all kinds of things in the world, just trying to prove what we are what we are up to. So Dido says, Dido here, using the cards was so profound for me. I realized spirituality was right up there for me. Beautiful, Dido. Thank you so much for sharing that because that, that's actually what happened for this other client too, is um, recognizing that spirituality was the primary value and everything else lived underneath that. And then they realized that in their lives, in their marketing, in their presence, that spirituality was absent. And so if that's the case, if we are primarily spiritual beings and we don't incorporate that in the expression of ourselves in our lives and in our businesses and, and in our interactions with each other, you know, how, how can we be fulfilled really ultimately? Elaine says, technical issues are happening all over right now. Well, thank you for that, Elaine. At least I don't know. I don't have to feel like it's just me. Um, anyway, 
So this whole idea of human being versus human doing, like in, in the, if we could allow ourselves to operate that we, from the place that we are good enough, that we are enough, just by virtue of the fact that we're here breathing, you know, whatever the, the, um, the genetic lottery is, you know, with the, with the ability to have been uh, here as the result of however ch many chances in a million that um, that you were the one that showed up here, just by virtue of that, to be worthy of being here. Oh my gosh, Gia, thank you. So good to have you here with us. I'm so glad it's finally clear. Uh, my, my computer uh, had lost its charge and now it's at 10%. So um, maybe 10% is the trick that you need at least 10% energy to be able to show up <laughs> and be clear. I don't know. Anyway, um, life as metaphor, right? But when we talk about this, when we talk about this idea of, um, of, sufficiency you know if we were to operate from a place of sufficiency then we could make choices that were actually in alignment or more we, we would be making choices that are in alignment with what our heart is calling us to express right and so um i i have a client in four minutes so i have another minute or two and i'm so sorry today's conversation got cut short, but it's all perfect in its way, right? Um, so Lisa says you can live on 10% of heart function too. Interesting, right? 10%. Now imagine if we lived on 100%. Oh my gosh, right? So um, in alignment with our values, maybe most of us are living with like 10% because we're not really clear about having identified, really truly identified our actual core values. And, and when we're in alignment with our values, when we expose our values to ourselves, then, then we can be living a very much richer life. And so um, this, this notion of being a human being instead of a human doing. The human doing part is the part that is really trying to achieve validation from externals or from our own judgment about who we think we should be rather than who we are. So the trick with this, these core connection cards with the values exercise the trick is to be really honest about what your values actually are. We will have the topic again, Gia. Maybe I'll start it off Monday with this. Thank you for asking. Um, and I appreciate that. I think I will um, revisit it on Monday because it's a really, really important topic. And um, anyway, uh, when, when we stop thinking about the values we should have, you know, or the things we aspire to, and the things we really truly value as shown in every aspect of our lives, then, then it's a, um, a very different experience. So Lisa says, Mira, I hope you and your family have a very happy Passover. Thank you so much, Lisa. And to everyone who is celebrating Passover, the um, wishes out to all of you. And um, I, again, thank you for hanging in through uh, the technical difficulties. Gia says, and I'm going to have to run in a second, on my spiritual journey, I'm realizing how we are human being and not human doing. And that's where stress comes in and illusion takes over. Absolutely. I can't wait to have this conversation with you guys. We'll do it on Monday. Um, being is all we are here to be, Isabel says, yes. And if we could figure that out, how much happier a world we would be in, right? 
Isn't it true? So um, Lisa says, a very holy day. Sweet your intentions. The gates of heaven are open. Happy hologram, says Isabel. Beautiful. Love, love, love to all of you. I'm Mira Rubin. This is the core connection. I try to go live each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern here on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. And um, please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network. So much love to all of you. And I wish you a wonderful weekend. Looking forward to seeing you again here really, really soon.